for coming back to Hamilton Life. A dedicated group of volunteers plant, maintain, and then harvest fresh produce for local food banks and hot meal programs. Somebody's got to do that work, and we're talking to those people who are. In fact, over 220 thousand pounds of fresh produce has been harvested in the past nine years. Joining me now is Allison Williams with Hamilton Victory Gardens. Welcome. Thank you. Allison, this is uh, such an inspiring group that, uh, that I'm just learning about now because you don't give so much thought to, yeah, you know people donate you know, peanut butter and tuna, uh, cans of tuna to the food bank, but there's a lot of fresh produce that's uh, required to help increase food stability, right? We hear about food insecurity. People just don't have access to nutritious food to help their families thrive. And that's where you guys come in, right? Exactly, yeah. We know in food banks and um, community organizations, one of the, uh, the areas where they do experience shortages is in fresh produce. Um, and uh, the beauty of the, the produce that we grow is that it's um, organic. So it's, um, it's the best, right? It's the good stuff, as they say. Nutrient dense, it's what's gonna give people life and vibrancy uh, so that they can you know, keep going. That's right, exactly. And we also grow a lot of um, non-traditional vegetables, vegetables that you and I likely wouldn't see in the grocery store. Is that because the, 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 the diversity of people accessing the need for this food is so great? That's right, yeah, a lot of new Canadians um, that are coming into the, uh, the country who, um, who eat different produce. So we've been experimenting with, uh, uh, with growing this, this type of produce and it's been a great learning opportunity. Lots of, um, lo like lots of... Give me some, an example of stuff that as native Canadians we might not think about. Well, okra is a really big, um, uh, you know, very popular vegetable that I had never heard of. I grew up you know, gardening. My dad was a big gardener. We had an acre um, that we gardened every single summer. And again, we were sort of uh, ahead of the curve. It was all organic. Um, and my mom was really big at um, jarring up everything, the pickles and the uh, tomatoes and the carrots and so on and so forth. So I had never heard of, um, of okra before, but it grows extremely well in Hamilton. And it's uh, usually one of the things that uh, um, moves off the shelf first in these food banks. Interesting. How yeah. much food are we talking about here? How much are you growing? Well, well, last year we um, we grew about 3,500 pounds, um, and we put in about 3,000 volunteer hours. So we're 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 still coming back from from the pandemic. We lost a few of our gardens, and we lost a, a large number of our volunteers as a result of the pandemic. So um, we've hired a full-time volunteer coordinator who's really been able to assist with with recruiting and retaining, as well as training up these volunteers. So you need more people to put shovels in the ground and to plant those seeds and to water them, all that stuff? And to weed and to harvest and to transport. Um, we're always recruiting for our board of directors as well. What would be, uh, uh, besides knowing that you're making a difference, uh, are there some cool things about volunteering? Oh, there sure is. I mean, the citizenship obviously is important because you have a sense of meaning and purpose. There's also a great community of other volunteers who you get to, uh, to learn about and to come to know over time. And we know that that community engagement is really important as a social determinant of health. So that community cohesion is a critical piece. It's also great exercise and it gets you out and about, right? You're outside, you're moving your body, you're engaging with others, you're learning. You're learning about new, new, new ways of gardening, new produce, ways of storage, and so on and so forth. And you're just, again, making the, the community a better place to be. I think there's something very valuable, too, about just that honest, hands-on work. You know, pulling a weed out of the ground. It doesn't seem like much, but uh, there's something very therapeutic about just getting down with nature and interacting in that very specific, direct way. And then knowing that this plant that you're helping survive truly makes a difference to somebody else's family. Yes, exactly. Yeah, there was a, um, 
I work at McMaster University as a social scientist. I'm a member of the School of Earth, Environment, and Society. And some of the research that I, that I do is around therapeutic landscapes, so looking at how places within our world um, prove to be therapeutic for those individuals who are within them. And gardening is recognized as a really therapeutic activity, not only for young people, but older folks, folks who have dementia, people who are end, at end of life. So there's been reams and reams of research and a growing um, amount of research that's looking at gardening as therapeutic. There's also, you know, something about the physicality of doing something. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually, uh, when gardening, we inhale um, a lot of the uh, um, uh, um, the positive attributes of the soil and, and the, um, the vegetables and that proves to be, so the scientists tell us, really, really good for us. For sure. I yeah. back that up 100%. Who's getting the food? Who, what, what community organizations are receiving this food and, and what do they do with it? Yeah, so our, our primary um, uh, uh, recipients are the food banks, but we also have a lot of community organizations like Neighbor to Neighbor who have experienced a 30% rise in demand for their services um, in the last year. So, you know, we, we, we really try to distribute where the need is most. Um, but food banks are our primary, uh, primary recipient. Thank goodness for those food banks. You're doing this uh, thanks in part to some of the um, uh, money you've received from the Trillium Foundation, the $25,000 Resilient Communities Fund, helping you do this good work. Can we donate money ourselves, though? You, like, would that be helpful to you? Certainly our website at hamiltonvictorygardens.org provides that opportunity for donation. Um, but a, lar a, a lot of our large um, um, grants come from organizations like the Ontario Trillium Foundation. Um, again, our website is a great opportunity for individuals to learn how to apply for a volunteer position. Um, again, this is a great time to be recruiting and applying for our Worker B sessions, which are basically three-hour sessions twice a week. And you're able to determine which, which um, site you're interested in working in. We have seven active sites at this point. So These are um, seven gardens, you mean? That's right. Okay. Seven gardens throughout the city. And there's always a site leader who can basically not only direct but um, educate all the volunteers as to what needs to be prioritized. In the intro, it said you sometimes pick some unusual places. Give me an example. Uh, well, well, right now we're working quite closely with um, Indwell, uh, and we have a number of different sites um, through their various housing um, uh, housing sites. We also have Macasa Lodge, which is um, primarily raised beds, mm. um, so really accessible for people in wheelchairs or individuals who have mobility issues. So um, again, our website outlines exactly where we are and where we're looking for volunteers. Um, like I say, the Worker B sessions provide about a three-hour window where individuals can come and go twice a week, and that, again, is a great opportunity to learn and become involved. I was a site coordinator for one of our gardens in Stony Creek. Uh, I first began as a worker bee during the pandemic and volunteered with a group of about eight different individuals, learned a ton, had a great time, and then the following year was the site coordinator for that particular garden. Unfortunately, that garden has since closed down because we lost our, our water source. But again, um, we're continuing to, to see our numbers come back up again. In 2020, we had 12 sites. In 2024, we're at seven, but we're again continuing to grow those sites. Okay. Yeah. Just keep it going, getting bigger and better. Mm -hmm. All right, one last time, uh, if somebody wants to learn how to volunteer or just get more information about the program in general, the website is? Is HamiltonVictoryGardens.org. So it's, again, one word, HamiltonVictoryGarden, with an S, dot org. Thank you so much. My for pleasure. For everything that you do. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having us. Oh, please, uh, it was all my pleasure. Thank you. On the next Hamilton Life, Tim Potisic's going to be here because beer is the name of the festival. So he'll tell us all about the festival lineup this summer. The Westdale will be here. The Westdale Theatre will talk about all the great things coming up on their calendar. And Westfield Heritage Village is showcasing their maple syrup festival. And guess what? We're going to be there making some maple syrup candies, I guess, or just making that maple syrup. Smells so good. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Hamilton Life, and we will see you right here 
on Hamilton Life.